Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode 96 of Game Programming. So, we are nearing episode 100 here. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about uh, mob speeds today. So, last time we took a look at making our chase. Our only chase us when we got too close. Here he is right here in the red. And as you can see, as soon as we move close to him... Well, a bit closer than that. Oh no, he's after us. Okay, so the primary problem with this is that he's kind of too fast, right? We can't outrun him ever. And that's a bit of a problem. Uh, so we're, we're going to go ahead and fix that um, today, today, I guess, by uh, actually, well, I mean, it's not only going to be fixing this. That's what I want you guys to get from this. Um, fixing this isn't the only thing it's going to be doing. It's just going to allow us to change the speed of our mobs because right now they, they actually just have a, they don't have a speed, okay? They just walk. Um, if you go to... um. If you go over here to, um, let's see, okay, I'm going to show you guys a few things here, but first of all, if we go into player, since that's, uh, I guess, our prime example of a mob here, you can see that what we have is X, A, Y, A, and uh, we either, you know, subtract that stuff, or we add it, and um, over here in, let me just get rid of this, over here in, um, where is it, over here in, uh, in this move method here, we uh, just add X, A, and Y, A into that. And that's how we move. Now, if we go into player and we do something like, uh, you know, if we, if we move up, for example, uh, instead of YA minus minus, YA minus equals two. So that's twice as fast. You'll see that we actually, you know, we move up a lot faster than we move down. Now, you guys might be like, oh, okay, that's really simple. You know, that's easy. But it's really not that simple because um, yeah, I wish it was because the problem is collision starts to kind of slow down there. Well, not slow down, but screw up. If we're going left and we are going 10 blocks per second essentially, um, what happens is, you can see we move really fast, what happens is if we actually, 10 is probably not enough here, um, let's see what's a good, I think, uh, let me just find a good section here so I can demonstrate what I'm talking about, that's probably a good one. Um, what will happen sometimes, and you have to get this just right, so let's maybe put this up to 16, um, let's go up here, up, up, up. Um, okay, this is not working for me right now. Well, you can kind of see it there. See, look at that. We're actually, we're being stopped right here by collision. And worse, even worse sometimes is not only will, will we get stopped at the wrong place, we might also get transported outside the level. So if I put this up to something ridiculous like 46 again, you'd probably never want to move that fast. But if I do that, um, what will happen sometimes, you know, if ever, this is just not wanting to work. All right, so the going outside the level stuff isn't working, but what you can see is as soon as I hit left, you know, we're not colliding where we should be. We're colliding, like in this case, probably about two blocks uh, right of where we should be. And if I can just find just the right place here, um, you can see that right there. I mean, that's, I'm going, I'm trying to go left here and it's just not letting me pass this point. And there's all these sorts of problems with collision, okay? And that that's an issue. So we want to try and fix that. So how can we do that? Well, it's actually rather simple. If we want to move faster, if we want to move slower, it gets a bit complicated, but um, we'll see what we can cover today. Hopefully you guys will uh, will get this. So if we go into mob, let's just close everything else except for mob and player, because that's what we're, that's what we're going to be focusing on and possibly um, our chaser after we actually implement the main stuff here. Um, in our collision method, what we do is we check to see if the if the position where the player is going to move to, or sorry, the position that the, where, where the mob is going to move to is solid or not. Okay, that's what we're doing. That's it. Now, the problemo here is that, um, uh, well, the, the problem here is that if XA is actually just, just bigger, right? If it's just, if it's just bigger than what it should be, then we have a problem, don't we? Because if, if XA is, let's just say it's 9, then X plus 9 would be if, if our X value was like, I don't know, 8 for example, X, uh, 8 plus 9 is 17. So it would actually skip over the tile that was between 8 and 16, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. Um, right? It would skip over the tile that is that is pretty much between 8 and 16 because we're adding 17 to it. Now, to illustrate this, I'm going to use paint.net because that's how I roll. Um, to illustrate this, if I grab a brush here quickly, 
And if we have like our player here, who's going to be a blue little entity over here, this is our player, right? And then over here, what I want to do is show you guys a tile. This is a solid tile right here, or, or a wall basically. Now, the width of this wall is 8 pixels. Our player right now, the way that he moves right is he has an X position and he also has an XA. XA is essentially X amount. It's the amount of translation he receives, or she, of course. Um, so if X, if X here is 8, right, this wall over here, let's just say it's located at about 8 as well. And this side is 16 since the width is 8. Um, and 8 plus 8 is 16. Um, if XA here happens to be 7, then x then a plus 7 is equal to 17. So the player's new position would actually be um, 17, which is out here. So what he's done is he's actually moved past that wall. So what we need to do, right, logically, if you think this through as well, what we actually need to do here is somehow get the player, right, to actually, instead of just move plus seven in one go, to kind of move here first, then here first, then here first, then here first, and then here, finally, right? We want him to kind of, instead of making one big movement, we want him to kind of make small, a lot of small movements, right? And if you guys are pretty bright, and I know you guys are, you're probably thinking, well, a for loop, and that is pretty much it. We want to use a for loop. Sorry about this uh, hideous mouse handwriting here. Um, I should get a graphics tablet sorted. I've got one, but it's just to, you know, bother plugging it all the, all the time. Um, we need to make a for loop that basically uh, goes through this. Now, now the part where it gets tricky is very, very simple. A, what is the increment, right? How much do we want to advance it by, right? One might be fine, yeah? In fact, one is usually what you'd go with. But what if we have something where, well, what if we have something where... We want to move the player at a speed of 0 0.5. This is the player. We want to move this, the player at the, at the speed of 0 0.5. If we have a for loop going to 1, the player is just not going to move. Because if we have i is less than 1, for example, the speed, i is less than 0 0.5, right? And of course, we'll have i++. plus plus. i++ plus plus is going to set the interval to be 1, right? We can change i++, plus plus, of course, to something like i plus equals 5, and then the interval would be 5. But in this case, you know... If it's 0 0.5, we probably have to nudge it down to something like 0.1 or something. But the thing is, that might be too slow. Like, why on earth, if we want to move normally here by 1, instead of just moving normally by 1 pixel, you know, per update essentially, we'll be actually moving 10 times the amount, but in 0 0.1 pixel increments. Now, that's an issue, right? Because, well, performance. So, what I want you guys to kind of take away from this little lesson here is that um what we're essentially going to do is we're going to we're going to essentially run a bit of an if check not really but kind of if our value is greater than you know 1 it can still be decimal so it could be 1.5 it could be you know 1.6 it could be anything right and we really do have to decide what the increments are going to be and that that's where it gets a bit trickier so the way that I like to do the do these things is kind of um well first of all we need to really make XA and YA doubles. That's the first thing we need to do. And we also need to make sure that they're doubles here. Now this completely won't matter, okay? And the reason is that you know while we will have to change double here and here, we've done this before. Okay, we have. Um we did it for particles, I'm pretty sure. If we go into particle here, um you'll see that in the collision code yeah we've got doubles and then we've got integers the cast to it and we've got all this code figured out here we might want to pretty much copy and paste that into a uh, mob here and get that just just to get that sorted out so we don't have to deal with that you can see it works just straight away here and of course change this to be ix and iy right and of course because of that we might want to change our collision to be proper as well uh if we're if we're dealing with 16 size sprites that should pretty much be uh pixel perfect here so let's just test this out right now see if it hasn't screwed anything up here in terms of, in terms of where collision goes and it's it's not bad like we are getting a bit of um we want to offset that maybe maybe a little bit here but in terms of actual collision you know this is this is some pretty precise collision here um again as i said you you might want to offset the stuff we can do that later though that's not an issue um and what we kind of want to do here is uh over here and where, where we actually run this collision code 
what I like to do is a bit of a for loop. So what you could do is for in i equals zero, this is just a demonstration by the way. Um, in fact, if we separate these completely, it'd probably be a lot better. So for in y equals zero, y is less than y a, y plus plus, right? We could do a simple check like that. And then say in that case, if a uh, collision is not detected here, and the XA, XA is kind of irrelevant here since we're moving in Y, but that doesn't matter. Um, you know, then advance on the Y axis. And then we can do the same thing for X. Now, the reason this would work well is because, of course, if we actually look at the difference here, this is going to be hard to illustrate, isn't it? Just because of this, just because this isn't the cleanest um, way to, to demonstrate this. Let's get rid of this code for a minute and just look at, look at what it looks like right now. If we go down into, um, where are we? If we go down into uh, over here, where we go, um, we travel different directions here, and we just boost this boost the speed by about ten. Uh, if we launch our game here, you can see that we move fast. Now the difference is that um, if I try and find a good amount here, um, you can see how that's kind of well. I'm not sure if that's even flawed because it's hard to tell, but that's what it looks like with that essentially on there. Now. If we were to do something different, where we did something like this instead, on the y-axis here, so it would only uh, increment by one. That's important. Oh, yeah, hang on a minute. Yes, that's important, right? And this would also be essentially. Um, I think collisions. No, yeah, collision would be y as well. Hang on a minute. Let me just figure that out. Collision would be um. Yeah, y a plus y. Where y a is? No, sorry, not y a plus y. Oh, this is where it gets kind of complicated as well. Um, I think it would just be Y, in fact. Yeah, it would be Y. Okay, and then, uh, hang on a minute. This should be this dot Y, shouldn't it? Yes, and that's how we'll animate that as well, okay? So if we take a look at that, what we should get is the same result here. Actually, no, we can't actually move upwards. This is also where it, where, <laughs> where it becomes a bit of a problem, okay? Um, we need a bit of a method here. Uh, really kind of like an absolute... I think it is an absolute, isn't it? Because the thing is, if y is less than zero to begin with, we have a problem. So math.abs ya um, should work. Let's try that out. Okay, but we're moving down now. Okay, that's an issue. Um, I'm just thinking about the best fix for this. The best fix would probably be... The way that I usually do it, honestly, is just making a, a bit of a method here. Uh, the returns an integer called like um, our own kind of ABS and it's going to take in a value obviously it's called value here and all it's going to do here is it's going to say that if um, it, it's kind of it's kind of like absolute right it's kind of like ABS but not in the sense that it returns the actual value it's just going to return one instead of the actual value so in other words if you know if value is less than zero it's just going to return negative one and if the value is greater than zero or basically else it's going to return a positive one okay that's all it's going to do so we've never used that before and we're about to so what that will do here is for us is instead of y plus plus here because that would it mean that it's always going to be positive we can actually just plus equals our abs of our value which is ya okay and what that will do here what's going on here um okay let's change this to double all right, so if we if we check that out, of course, what we're going to get is actual upper movement. Um, and what you should be able to see, we do get stuck sometimes, and that's because we actually haven't finished it. <laughs> we've only done it from one axis. But if, if we move up here, you can see that it actually, you know, it does it properly, okay? Now, down is a bit of a problem because, of course, you know, it did do it properly and down doesn't work properly yet. But if we, uh, if we do sort that out, um, or X and Y, I think, rather, is a problem. If we do the same for X... So for int x is equal to zero, x is less than uh, absolute xa, x plus plus, um, and we change this to uh, x, the local variable, and that can just be y. It doesn't really matter, of course. Um, this, that we could probably get away with putting that to zero um, since we're tracking uh, horizontal movement here. This dot x plus equals abs xa, okay? Um, and then we can get rid of this completely. And that's really what a method looks like. So if we check that out, hopefully, um, oh no, we still get stuck sometimes. That's probably an issue. Um, let's see here. What do we got? 
I think it might be with this card here because I haven't double checked that. Um, hmm. Why do we get stuck? So we're just we're translating in ten increments of one. That should be right. Uh, X is the amount that we move. I wonder if um I wonder if it's only happening for up and down. Let let's just let's change the entire player speed here to be um. 10 and we are running out of time um, and see if it ha happens for oh, okay it does in fact that actually looks to be worse that's probably a problem um, right <laughs> so let's uh, let's figure out why that's why that why that's happening first of all um, oh I know why this should always be one I think oh well yeah this should always be ABS XA as well. Whoopsies. Oh, why are here? All right, let's check that out. Okay, there we go. See? So now what we get is actual like pixel precise collision instead of having, um, and of course, we'll just have to adjust that aesthetically. You can see that we're not actually being able to go through that. That's just how it's gonna be on every floor. And that's just how it is with the normal collision here. Um, but what we can do here is we can move very, very fast and, uh, we won't be going through walls. Our collision will still be exactly the same, which is good. Anyway, let's just, let's just dumb this down to about two, just so we're a bit faster. And what I'll show you guys, and we'll cover slow walking, uh, next time, just cause we're running out of time. But, um, if we're going twice the speed, if we go up to our chaser here, you can see he starts chasing us and we can outrun him. And when, when we do, he stops, right? See? He stopped. He's chasing us and nope, we got out of his range. See? So that's how that works and you can see it's pretty cool. So that is, uh, that's that's going to pretty much wrap up episode 96 of Game Programming. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Um, might be a bit of a difficult con concept to grasp. Shouldn't be, okay? But it uh, it gets a bit more involved, as I said, for, um, for our next one, which is, uh, well, you know slow stuff but um and of course don't forget that this uh, is actually doing it do an interval of one so essentially you could argue that if we set it to 2.5 it's really just going to be doing it at three um instead of 2.5 for the xa or the ya but uh that's the way the cookie crumbles that's probably the second time i said that bad idea but i'll see you guys next time goodbye mm -hmm.